Hello, I'm here with Philip Shera, um, professor at uh, the University of Dallas in Texas. And he is this year awarded the ESD Novo Nordisk Foundation Diabetes Prize of Excellence. Congratulations for that. And can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. I was not born in Texas, actually. I was born in Switzerland, uh, in central Switzerland, and I actually went through my entire education in Switzerland, got my PhD in uh, Basel in uh, biochemistry at the Biocentrum and then moved on as a postdoc to the States with the original intent to come back to Europe but then I got stuck after you know 10 years in New York and now 10 years in Texas um, it's been about 20 25 years since I left Switzerland. Okay. Um, what got you interested in diabetes? Your main work is actually on adipose tissue but of course this is highly implicated in diabetes. So we actually came from a cell biology background. We were interested originally actually in how proteins got imported and targeted and imported into mitochondria. And we're elucidating the protein import machinery in this context. And then as I moved on to a postdoc uh, at MIT, I decided I would like to focus further on the secretory pathway of a cell. And at the time, fat cells, adipocytes were very popular. And I started to work on that, uh, particularly the insulin-mediated translocation of the glucose transporter was actually something that a lot of different laboratories uh, studied at the time. And as I saw that this is a very busy area, we moved actually away a little bit from that uh, subcellular compartment and started to study secretion of the fat cell. And there. Uh, it was actually a very timely thing because uh, shortly thereafter leptin was reported and we reported adiponectin. So we started to realize that the fat cell is actually a very potent secretory cell and is an endocrine, uh, part of an endocrine organ in that sense. So that's how we sort of drifted step by step uh, towards diabetes research and sort of got stuck in there because it's been a really, really fun um, area to be working in. Mm -hmm. Um, was there something or someone that really helped you advance your career? Well, like with everybody else, I think the environment that you work in is very important from your PhD mentor, that was uh, Jeff Schatz at the time, to my uh, postdoctoral men mentor, Harvey Lodish at MIT, uh, which then sort of lead to your own first independent steps at the time at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. So all along, you really are working in a, an environment and nobody works by themselves in an isolated fashion. So the, the environment is actually incredibly important at every stage of the career to actually uh, become uh, productive and, and learn not only from your mentors, but also from your peers that you surround yourself with. <laughs> And so your lecture is titled The Many Secret Lives of Atidocytes Implications for Diabetes. Can you give us a really short overview of the many secret lives? Well, we underestimate the adipocyte. Uh, it is, again, a cell that we all love to hate. Uh, we have, most of us have too many of them, and we think uh, that we really associate the fat cell with nothing but trouble, cardiovascular, diabetes, cancer. Uh, if you have too many of them, it's usually bad news. Uh, what I'm trying to do during the lecture is really highlight the adipocyte as our friend, without which we would have a very hard time to exist and properly respond to nutrient surplus and nutrient deprivation. And as such, it's a highly versatile cell, even though microscopically it really looks like it's a bag of fat and nothing else. But it actually has a very interesting inner life um, that is extremely active and that communicates at multiple levels uh, with the surroundings, with other tissues, with its microenvironment. And it does so by releasing, as you would expect, protein hormonal factors but also lipid factors and metabolites that actually play a very crucial role in this communication process between the fat cell and the rest of the body. Okay, thank you. So I'm going you. to highlight basically some of these aspects uh, in, in a little bit further detail, but of course I'm also trying to give a bit of an overview of the physiology of the fat cell and what uh, my group uh, has been able to contribute over the years. Mm -hmm. 
and where do you see the future of all this? Well, I still think we've only scratched the surface of these uh, cells. Uh, I think we have yet so much more to learn. And I think we live in a very exciting time at this moment because there's new technologies. Uh, the advent of omics in the big scheme of things that allow us to characterize these things much more extensively. The advances we've made in the areas of uh, mouse genetics uh, that allow us to target these things much more specifically in ways that we were not able to do that uh, in the past. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to highlight actually completely new areas and avenues for pharmacological intervention in the future that will allow us to basically keep our adipose tissue fully functional and happy. And when our fat tissue is happy, it manages actually to be metabolically very flexible, which means that it can adapt very well to uh, nutrition starvation versus nutrition overflow. And that's uh, very important for the systemic metabolic homeostasis. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure.